ferritin. Now, when you hear ferritin, you need to already be thinking iron, right? Fe, you know, remember from chemistry, iron. So ferritin uh, has to do with iron. Let's talk about it in just a second here. For adult men, you're looking at 20 to 250. And for adult women, you're looking at 10 to 120. And adult women older than 40, you're looking at about 10 to 260. Okay, so the, the, the level is going to be different for men and women. It's going to be different for women as they age as well. So like we said, you know ferritin has to do with iron. Okay, so what is ferritin? All right, ferritin is a protein found inside cells of basically every, almost every living organism, okay, including algae, bacteria, and many kinds of animals. So, and what ferritin does is it's found inside the cells and it stores iron so that our body can use it later. Okay, so it's important that we have iron. We'll talk about iron in, in a little bit, but we know that we need this iron. Okay, so what ferritin does, it actually stores this iron within the cell and then it, it releases it for our body to use in, in later in, in a very controlled manner. Okay, so levels will vary according to age and gender, but the levels are not necessarily affected by how much iron we intake, okay? And they're not really subject to how much we get rid of. Now, one of the reasons that we're going to run a ferritin level is because as compared to total iron or total binding iron capacity or TIBC, ferritin is much more sensitive uh, to iron deficiency anemia. Okay, so if we really want to determine you know, what kind of anemia our patient has. Let's say we, we find out they have anemia, but we want to find out, you know, what kind is it pernicious anemia or iron or uh, iron deficiency anemia? What, what kind of anemia is our patient experiencing? We're going to run our ferritin level. And this will really give us a really good idea if the level's less than uh, about 10, we're going to start thinking that our patient has iron deficiency anemia. So it can be used really specifically for that, for diagnosing iron deficiency anemia. And they can also be really helpful during uh, pregnancy and it can help us kind of monitor hematologic responses and how the how the uh, woman is doing during pregnancy so we can run ferritin at, at those moments another reason we'll run ferritin is it can it can help and it can support a diagnosis of iron metabolism and storage disorders okay so some of the reasons we're going to see a decrease like we already talked about is going to be like iron deficiency anemia, anemia and then hemodialysis some of the reasons we'll see it elevated would be like iron metabolism disorders, okay? Uh, we might also see it elevated with uh, fasting, with alcoholism. You can see it elevated with an acute or a chronic infection. And then we'll also be elevated with leukemias. So you can think some of these blood disorders as well, uh, and thalassemia as well, it's gonna be elevated. But really what you need to remember here and what I want you to think about is that one of the main reasons we're running this is to identify iron deficiency anemia. It's very specific to iron deficiency anemia. And so if we have a level lower than 10, we're really thinking iron that we're thinking iron deficiency anemia. Okay. And just remember ferritin stores iron within the cell and it releases it uh, as it need to in a very controlled fashion.